Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Tishman Carpochan AMSIS Limited Earning Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need any assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pascal Willeman. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you for the introduction and uh, uh, good evening, uh, dear shareholders, and thank you for participating to our investor call. Uh, I'm Pascal Vian, CEO of uh, Carbogen MCS branch. Uh, I'd like to come back on the first quarter uh, results, uh, which uh, uh, demonstrate for Carbogen MCS a very good result. Uh, proud of what we have done last year, if we compare uh, quarter to quarter. This is the results of, uh, of uh, a number of consolidated actions that we have uh, taken over last year, and uh, uh, we are very happy with the outcome on, on, on this quarter uh, on the top line. We see, however, uh, that we can do better in terms of, uh, of profitability, and this is the reason why we are implementing further actions to, to, uh, to leverage on this. Uh, obviously, we are still struggling with a number of external factors, uh, depending on the countries, especially in Europe, uh, cost of energy and raw materials are still affecting our, our performance. Uh, and uh, this is something, although we, we, we've taken a, lo a lot of uh, different uh, initiatives, uh, difficult to predict and, 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 and follow up on uh, on those increases, uh, because from time to time it's difficult to pass on those extra cost to uh, uh, final customers because of contract or high competitions uh, coming from uh, different type of product on different type of markets. However, we stay very uh, optimistic for the next quarters that are, that are coming and uh, we should uh, uh, reach uh, our targets, uh, which are obviously uh, an increase of the, of the revenues for the, for, uh, for the top line and uh, as well as uh, an improvement of, uh, of, the, of the profitability. In terms of uh, uh, future, we also uh, have a good news because we, uh, we are registering a large number of new projects coming in with a very healthy pipeline of uh, development projects for the CRAM activities. So it's uh, a good sign that uh, we have in hand uh, a large part of our purchase order for the next uh, months uh, in front of us. So give, you, give us a lot of confidence in terms of uh, uh, achieving those, those numbers. Last point I'd like to emphasize is the, we, as we mentioned already in, in the previous call that uh, we are engaging uh, carbon and in a full digital transformation. This internal project is, is going well. Uh, with the implementation of uh, our new ERP ASAP, uh, and uh, we are on track to uh, to, to release this uh, new uh, uh, ERP uh, during the first quarter of uh, 24. It goes along with uh, with uh, a number of of uh, transformations that we are going to uh, implement at Carbogen and to uh, even improve our level of profitability in, in that branch. Uh, thank you, everybody, and I pass on uh, Mr. Ashendal, our CEO. Thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, very good evening to everybody. Uh, I'm sure all of you would have a chance to to go over the financial results for the for the first quarter of the current financial year, which uh, in fact was a very good quarter for us. Uh, we reported a record sale of 723 crores as compared to 540 crores in the comparable quarter of last year. This represents close to 34% of growth in the, in the revenue top line. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, our, our estimate for the full year remains in line with what we had mentioned earlier, which would be uh, anywhere between 2700 to 2750 crores. Um, as far as um, the, the COGS are concerned, uh, 
uh, the cost of goods sold are concerned, those remain at about 22%, uh, which is more or less in line with our annual estimate of close to about 20%. Um, we had, uh, uh, as Pascal mentioned, it was a it was a very good quarter for Carbogenensis Switzerland, where the commercial revenue increased significantly, and so did uh, the phase three revenue. Uh, the commercial revenue increased from 11.5 million in Q1 of last year to 30.5 million in Q1 of the current financial year. So that's a significant jump which is driving the growth in the revenues. Uh, as far as our employee expenses are concerned, which is one of the biggest expense items on our P&Ls, uh, that increased by 40 crores in INR terms. However, uh, there, there is a forex impact on account of translation of the Swiss franc into INR, that is to the tune of about 20 crores. And uh, the, the, the remaining portion is largely rela related to the increase in the, uh, in the, in the uh, merit cost because of the inflation, in, especially in Europe. Uh, the other expenses of 143 crores includes a foreign exchange uh, notional loss of about 12 crores, and uh, that I mean that, that translates into an EBITDA of about 127 crores. Uh, this is after excluding the, the software as a service IT cost. Uh, so all of this translates into uh, an EBITDA margin of about 17.5% as compared to 16.5% in the, in the comparable quarter of last year. As far as the finance cost is concerned, uh, since most of our borrowing is in foreign currency, is denominated in foreign currency, uh, because of the sustained increase in the, in the LIBOR, SOFR, uh, rates, um, you know, whether it's U.S. dollar borrowing or Swiss franc borrowing, that has had a negative impact on the finance cost. Uh, so, which uh, the, the finance cost, which in the comparable quarter was about 19 crores, that increased to 28 crores in Q1 of this year. All of this translated into a profit before tax of about 29 and a half crores, and a profit after tax of uh, 17 crores as compared to a negative three crores in Q1 of last year and four crores uh, in Q1 of last year, respectively. As far as the segment-wise results are concerned, um, as, as I mentioned, Carbogenensis um, as, as a group uh, performed fantastically, uh, but more so on the cram side of the business, where the revenue increased by about 54% as compared to Q1 of last year. Um, so from 363 crores, it increased to 561 crores. As far as the, our, our Dutch business is concerned, uh, which manufactures the cholesterol and vitamin D analogs, we also saw a significant increase in revenue over there, uh, which was about 46.7%. So the revenue increased from 63 crores to 93 crores. Uh, driven by growth in both the cholesterol as well as the, the analog business. As far as India is concerned, uh, uh, as far as the NCE APIs and intermediates are concerned, uh, most of the orders to be serviced are back-ended in the current financial year, so which are to be serviced uh, between Q3 and Q4 of the financial year, and that is the reason we see a lower sales figure in Q1 of this year, but we expect most of it to be to be recouped, and we should be on our target to uh, to achieve a, a revenue in excess of 300 crores on the API side for the full financial year. As far as the quads and generics is concerned uh, for India, the revenue stood at about uh, 30 crores, and this was also lower as compared to what we are expecting um, for the full year on a run rate basis. So we do expect a pickup in that particular business in the remaining nine months of the financial year. Uh, so I would say it's more about the timing rather than anything else as far as the India business is concerned. 
and uh, obviously I'll, I'll hand over the call later to Paolo who can also explain about the, the, the recent regulatory audit and what we are expecting in the, in the next month. So overall it was a very good quarter for us, um, both on the revenue front as well as on the margin front. Uh, the EBITDA for Carbos and MCs, uh, which is the cramps business, stood at about 21.7% for the quarter as compared to 19.4% in the comparable quarter. Uh, the cholesterol and vitamin D analogs business did an EBITDA margin of 18.4% as compared to 19.3%. So what we see uh, in, this, in this particular business segment is that there is an increase in the margin as compared to Q4 of the last financial year. However, uh, the prices of the wool grease, which is the key raw material, uh, do remain elevated, uh, though we have seen a, a bit of a cooling off in the energy prices. Uh, as far as the India business is concerned, the margins were subdued largely because uh, the revenues were quite low in the, in the first quarter. However, as I mentioned, the revenue should pick up in the, in the remaining uh, three quarters of the financial year, which would result into significantly higher margins for the India business. Having said that, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Paolo Armanino, our Chief Operating Officer for the India business. Paolo? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, Paolo. Good evening, everyone. So maybe, uh, as you mentioned, I can give an update about uh, uh, the regulatory regu regulatory agency. Um, so uh, we had uh, faced uh, a, an inspection uh, last week uh, with uh, two inspectors from TMDA Japan plus two translators. Uh, it consisted in a four days audit at our Bavia site which is the same site where we are going to have the DQM in the uh, uh, second half of September. Uh, the inspection was uh, related to one product, but most in, general, most in general, there was the inspection of the overall site, so all the premises were uh, inspected by the uh, two auditors. Uh, the inspection result was definitely uh, positive. We, we have seen a very, very good outcome by the inspector. And uh, only very few observations were uh, uh, were found. Uh, the nature of the observation seems not very severe. Uh, it they look uh, minor, actually, as a, as a nature. And uh, in the coming weeks, we will be receiving uh, uh, the, the report by the PMDA authority from Japan, and. Uh, uh, we will we, we, we reply to the to, to their observation, which uh, largely has been already done by the team uh, at Bavla site uh, uh, during the last day, because the observation, as I mentioned, were not particularly severe. Uh, so the PMDA audit has been completed, and now we are going to uh, focus uh, mainly for the coming uh, weeks uh, to the DKM audit, which is, as I mentioned, um, going to be held in the uh, second half of September. Uh, so, so this was a kind of uh, preliminary audit by the, uh, an external agency or an authority. Thank you, Paolo. I think uh, with, with that, uh, I think moderator, we can open the floor for Q and A. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may please press star and 1 again. Participants are requested to use the handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad.
The first question comes from Karan Agarwal from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Harshal and team. Uh, good morning and good evening to all of you. A couple of questions from me. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, the commercial NC revenue that you spoke about, would that be a function of the French facility ramp up or it's all coming out from Switzerland and that numbers that you gave out were only Switzerland and not France? Uh, hi, Karan. Thank you for your question. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, all of the cramps revenue for Carbogen Amsis is pertaining to the Swiss entity, UK entity, Shanghai, all these three entities put together. The French operations have uh, yet to, yet, yet to uh, commence in terms of uh, generating revenue. But possibly maybe you might want to add more to it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we are finalizing uh, all the qualifications and uh, we run our first uh, what so-called technical batch and we should start the, 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 the operational work uh, by the end of the month uh, and then uh, starting the, 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 the first uh, uh, development work with, with uh, customers uh, over uh, September, so which is uh, uh, good news. Uh, but uh, we not yet have commercial uh, production in that new facility uh, for the time being. We, uh, we only have a development project uh, serving a, a clinical trial for, for our customers. Okay. Uh, a couple of other questions. One, um, do you expect any of your uh, 15 late, late phase 3 molecules to, uh, uh, you know, commercialize in this year? And the second, Harshal, do you, uh, what's the gross and net debt on books as on 13 23? Sure. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So maybe possibly you want to answer the first question on the 15 molecules in the yeah. phase three. Yep. Now, for the time being, uh, on the on the on the, on the 15 uh, molecules that are still in phase three, uh, uh, two of them are prized, but the customer is not getting any any kind of. Uh, Further uh, information from uh, uh, U.S. authorities. So, uh, in principle, we should not see uh, this fiscal year something, but most probably for the next fiscal year. Yes. One of the Japanese customers that uh, we already mentioned, uh, you know, uh, part of the product is already commercial, uh, and another application for the for the product that we are manufacturing is a is should enter into a commercial stage by 25, and we are manufacturing the, 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 the validation campaign of, of that, that particular product. Uh, so we still have a lot of, of activity into the, into the, the development, uh, which would be probably transferred for the, during the next fiscal year. But for this year, there is no over commercial than the, the one that, that we are coming uh, the last wave uh, last year. Hi, Tarang, uh, you there? Still, uh... Yeah, so uh, Tarang, as far as the gross and net debt is concerned, uh, so our net debt stood at about 160 million Swiss francs. And uh, the gross debt was at about uh, 210 million. Okay. And just last one question, Harshal. I mean, are you seeing, uh, I mean, any weakness in terms of uh, your pipeline or your interaction with end customers because of, uh, you know, uh, fund, biotech funding, especially in the U.S., uh, uh, not garnering the momentum that we saw throughout 21 and the first half of 22? You are, you're absolutely right. We, we see we see an erosion in terms of, of market demand uh, because uh, when uh, 
few years back, we were seeing a lot of new biotech cre created and uh, raising uh, uh, funds. Uh, it looks like since the beginning of the year, it's become harder and harder to, to, to fund new companies and, 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 and to launch new, new projects. However, as I mentioned, uh, we see that the very uh, uh, by time, because by the end of the, of the first quarter, we, uh, we ended up by having uh, more than 26 million switch rank of, of, uh, of purchase order. And if you compare quarter to quarter, we, uh, we raised the, 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 this pipeline by 10%. So we still have a, a fairly healthy uh, situation, uh, notably linked to the fact that we are uh, very active on the uh, oncological market. And that specific market uh, is still a very uh, dynamic uh, a bit less than it used to be. We have to be uh, realistic, but uh, it still demonstrates a, a lot of dynamisms uh, comparing to other pharmaceutical uh, markets. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank the next you. question comes from Vishal Manchanda from Systematic. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I missed your opening comment. I uh, wanted to uh, understand whether Bawla facility has been inspected or it is uh, yet to get inspected. Hi, Vishal. So the Bawla site uh, from the EDQM still needs to be inspected. So that is what will happen in the next month. Okay. And uh, so you, that's for sure it's going to happen next month. Yeah, we, we got inspected by the uh, Japanese PMDA, uh, so that was uh, last week, and uh, th th that was for the Babla site for a specific product. Okay. And was that inspection successful? Yeah, it was a successful uh, inspection, and as Paolo mentioned, you know, they have pointed out some minor observations, but apart from that, it was uh, quite successful. Okay. And was the audit related to an NC uh, product or a gen or a generic product? No, so it, it was related to a product that we already supplied to one of our customers who wanted to launch it in uh, the Japanese market. Okay, so uh, you're not you're not currently supplying it from Bavla. Is that right? And you're supplying it from... No, no, no. We, we are already supplying it from Babla, but uh, not to the Japanese market. So now that the customer right. wants it to be launched in Japan, uh, that triggered this particular inspection. Okay. Okay. Uh, any color on the size of the opportunity uh, of this product? Um, I don't know, Paolo, if the customer has mentioned you know, what could be the potential opportunity? Yeah, they did not mention the, how they divide the different country, actually. So I cannot tell you about this. It's a large volume API or a, or a kind of uh, high, potent, high potent API? A oh, large volume API. Yes, it's about multi-tons of API. Okay. And uh, regarding the French facility, are all the costs related to the French facility into the number? Yes, all the costs, uh, you know, except for the costs that were related to setting up of the project, which were like uh, pre-operational costs, you know, those would be capitalized. But apart from that, all of the other costs, they go into the PNL. So the new employee that you would have recruited for the facility, uh, all those costs are being... Uh, Expensed or they expensed are out. Capitalized? No, so they are getting expensed out unless and until you know we identify that this employee worked on the on setting up of the plant. In that case, you know it would be capitalized. Okay, okay. Uh, and yeah. uh, I missed uh, missed the guidance around when the French facility would start contributing to the revenues. So th that would be uh, fr from September onwards. So most likely from Q3 on the commercial side. Okay. And um, kind of peak revenues could be around 30, 40 million dollars. Is that is that the right number? To, uh, yes, it is. Peak revenues from the French facility. Yes, yeah, that's that's what we have uh, as as a target. Uh, 
always difficult to 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 say exactly by when uh, shall we reach this uh, this peak uh, because as you uh, may understand we are building up the 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 the, the, the project pipeline with uh, with our customer what we can say is that uh, currently we are uh, having uh, there a number of customer audits and uh, all the audits are uh, extremely uh, uh, good and uh, we have a, a very nice feedback from all the customers that really enjoy this uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, facility so uh, uh, and it uh, translates into the fact that despite we haven't started yet we we have in hand already uh, about six millions of purchase order for that uh, for that particular unit and uh, and we uh, we keep on uh, on uh, on receiving a number of, of demand and uh, we are quoting those demands, and uh, we should increase our uh, project pipeline uh, fairly quickly. Um, so this facility is going to contribute to revenues this year, as it was planned in, in, in our budget, uh, for sure. Uh, and the peak uh, activities uh, should come for the next uh, two to three years, depending on how successful we will be to, to, to completely fill the, 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 the two uh, feeding line that we have in, uh, in, in that uh, manufacturing unit. Okay, got it. Uh, and just uh, one uh, one more on the ADC linker project that you're doing for the Japanese client. Uh, when is that uh, commercializing? A part of that is already commercial, uh, but it's not uh, uh, that part of the product that is commercialized is, is done by the customer himself. Uh, as we mentioned uh, already in previous calls, the, the facility that we have built and dedicated to that uh, to that uh, project uh, will come uh, and contribute to uh, the new applications for for that uh, particular IDC, and, and that is planned to be uh, marketed by by 25 by the customer. Okay, okay. Uh, and just one final one. What would be the capex uh, requirement for this financial year, FY24? I think on a consolidated basis, you know, we're looking at about uh, thirty. I mean, sorry, twenty-five to thirty million. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. The next question comes from Keshav Kumar from Raksan in Vastu. Please go ahead. Since we were doing it at Bavla before the EDQM audit, how have we serviced those volumes since the audit? I'm sorry, Keshav, can you please repeat your question? Uh, I think the initial part got cut off. Yeah, so the commercial crams we were doing at Bavla before the EDQM audit, how have we serviced yeah. those volumes since the audit? So, so Paolo, do you want to answer that? Paolo? Line drop, maybe. Oh, Paolo's line drop. Okay, so so basically, uh, Kesha, wh what happened after the EDQM observations is that, uh, you know, first of all, we performed detailed risk assessment for all of the molecules that were supplied to the customer. And once that stage was cleared, after that, uh, many of our customers got remote audit or physical audits done for the Babla site. Uh, they submitted those reports to the EMA the European Health Authority got the clearance and after that we were able to restart the manufacturing of those molecules for those customers. Um, in, in, in the cramps business, you know, what we are mandated by our customers is to keep at least five to six months of inventory for them in order to uh, make sure that there is, there is no, um, you know, there is no bottleneck in the supplies of the APIs, uh, number one. And number two, the customer also maintains good amount of inventory in order to make sure that the end product is not impacted. So the combination of these two factors and then obviously with the audits being done by the customers, after that we were able to restart the manufacturing and then the supplies are being made to the customers. 
So, um, you know, even today, in, uh, I mean, as, as we speak today, you know, we are manufacturing for most of our customers um, for whom we were manufacturing prior to the EDQM observations, and uh, we expect the volumes to increase quite a bit after the EDQM inspection is completed. So, sir, has there been any uh, attrition or revised quantities because our revenues have uh, uh, gone down drastically over the years since then? Well, it, yeah, I mean, in the initial years after the EDQM observations, uh, the, the revenue dropped significantly. So, if you see the India standalone revenue, uh, financial year 21, it dropped from, uh, you know, we were doing like about 500 plus crores out of India that dropped to about 200 crores in FY21, which then ramped up to 300 in 22, and then 400 crores last year. So as, as the customers kept on getting more and more, I mean, more and more customers started getting approvals, uh, we were able to supply more quantities to these customers. Uh, but still, you know, there are certain geographies where these customers, within Europe, that these customers are not able to sell uh, or use our APIs for the final product. Uh, where, in, in which case, the EDQM clearance becomes quite important for us. So, sir, uh, does that mean that, meanwhile, that customer might be shifting to a secondary source? Because they can well, also in many, hold. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the thing is that in many of the customers, uh, you know, we are the sole suppliers of the API. So what we understand is that, uh, you know, they would be shipping from whatever stock that they have, and they would have a good amount of stock of the APIs that were supplied earlier. So, um, you know, that, that, is, that is how we see it. And obviously in between there were the COVID years where as such um, the, the supplies were lower than what they were prior to COVID. So that also actually helped us in making sure that the customers had in, in uninterrupted supply. Sure, sir. So basically, if the ED, EDQM uh, audit goes through successfully, then we uh, can expect uh, to be back on the same base in uh, FY25, at least, what we were doing through we yeah. uh, EDQM. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it should be even higher than that with the kind of uh, orders that we are expecting from our existing customers plus it opens up the door to get uh, more orders for the new from the new customers as well. So we do expect a significant ramp up in in the in the revenues uh, after the EDQM clearance in the in the financial year after the EDQM clearance. Great, sir. And so secondly, uh, we had mentioned that uh, AMSYS China margins were 25% for uh, nine months FY23. So what was the full year number for uh, both revenues and margins? You mean for China? Yes. So China, uh, so in the first quarter, the margins were, were quite high. It was close to about uh, 35% uh, in the first quarter of this financial year. Even last year, the margins were about uh, 30% for the full financial year. Uh, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, so if I go back to FI19, uh, we did about 15% of PBT. Uh, after that, the following year was a deferred tax write-off, which was non-cash. But uh, nevertheless, the point being, we saw a one-off year with very good PBT showing what Shanghai can deliver, but never the sustainability. So what has led to the margins this time around, and why should uh, these be sustained and not mean revert back to the low, lower levels going forward? So what has happened is that, uh, you know, there has been, uh, uh, I mean, there has been quite a bit of transformation in, in our Shanghai side in terms of the orders which are now being manufactured out of, the, uh, out of that particular site. So if you see, uh, say, four or five years back, maybe we had two projects that were being done out of China uh, versus today we would have at least seven to eight projects which are being done out of the Shanghai site. Uh, the Shanghai site, you know, kind of acts as an extended branch of the of the Swiss arm. Uh, so we have seen many of the orders going to the Shanghai site, and uh, you know there have been a lot of improvements that have been done in that particular site in terms of making it um, a, a, as close to a GMP site as possible. So uh, the, the plan is that maybe in the near future we might even go for a Chinese FDA 
uh, so that you know we are able to sell in the Chinese market as well. Um, but Pascal, do you want to add anything to that on the on the China side? No, I think you you, you summarized well the the situation. One thing I can say is that in our business, uh, uh, all the, the the development work we do. Uh, we deliver to clinical uh, uh, trials uh, of the customers. If the clinical trials uh, uh, face uh, an issue and the customer stop the clinical trials from one day to the other, you are uh, uh, having an issue because you lose the, the, the project because of these clinical results. So that also explains sometimes the, the counter performance from from one quarter to, to another. Uh, we are uh, extremely depending from the success of, of the clinical trials uh, from our customer. And uh, yes, from time to time, uh, we, we face some, some issues because we have to find a new project to replace the one we, we just lost. This is the reason why I'm insisting, insisting with the sales teams to uh, border the, the customer portfolio. And uh, the more customer, the more projects we have, the less sensitive uh, we, we would be to uh, to uh, one or two project loss. This is this is the the key to uh, to uh, to uh, to get to a, a more regular performance on, on on one of those facilities. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will come back in the queue for more questions. Thanks. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Satish from Share Investments. Please go ahead. Hi. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. So I have a few questions for Pascal and few for Harshil. Harshil, can you just tell how much uh, money has been debited on the France uh, uh, plant in the current quarter, which on the revenue side, on the PNL cost side, uh, which has been debited in the PNL, and what type of a ramp up we can expect post EDQM from the existing customers itself? You know, where I think it's something like low hanging fruits, where you want the clearance of EDQM can definitely give a good pipeline burst. You know, in terms of revenue. If you can throw light on that. And for Pascal, what type of uh, uh, development pipeline uh, you are seeing in terms of your uh, order book for development side? Because we heard few, few CDMO players who are quite uh, gungo on the way development side work is uh, coming to them, you know. Basically, they are seeing unprecedented uh, inquiries for them. I just wanted to know what is your way and what is your business sense on those lines. And regarding the integration of... Uh, Carbogen Swiss and the India Unit 9, you know, because I think last two years you are handling any, having any sales from Unit 9, the hypo facility. So, what is the management view on making that site uh, commercial, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Sadish, for all your questions. I think we go one by one. So, uh, the first question uh, regarding the cost which have been debited to the PNL for the French facility, so that is 2.7 million euros. So that, that's the cost which is debited in the in the first quarter of this financial year. Okay. Um, sorry, if you can just repeat your second question. Uh, so it was so regarding the ramp, ramp up in the business from the existing. Yeah. So I, th I think the uh, existing customers uh, and maybe Paolo, you can also pitch in. But we do expect that the uh, that, that the business from the existing customers itself should increase uh, quite significantly after the EDQM clearance because many of them are waiting for that clearance to, to be obtained after which uh, they, they want huge amount of quantities of the, of the APIs slash the intermediates from us. Pa Paolo, do you want to add to that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You see, uh, exactly as you are saying, the main customer and also the last weeks and months, uh, uh, I'm speaking directly with the customer multiple times. They are just awaiting for the green light from EDQM. And they are having uh, already PO available and uh, selling price available. And so we discuss already uh, what is going to happen after EDQM. So there are also many markets which uh, currently they cannot supply material. And uh, immediately after the approval, they will be able to supply to this market. So major part of the customer are just like waiting for the approval by the DCM to restart uh, the, the business. And many of these customers are already discussing with us uh, in advanced phase of uh, contract PO and so on and so on. Okay. And to Pascal, regarding the development pipeline, you can throw some light on that. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, so regarding the development part, implying basically the the base of our of our customers is turning around uh, mainly uh, uh, oncology because we have uh, uh, IPO uh, uh, capabilities in uh, in Switzerland and, uh, and very long expertise around that. Uh, we also have a, a number of uh, on, uh, ophthalmologic uh, products. Uh, and uh, also a number of uh, orphan drugs applications uh, that we are we are facing. The capability uh, installed in Switzerland are not huge uh, comparing to some CMOs where they have a, a lot of plants, a lot of, of reactors to fill. So we have a we we more med medium size uh, compared to, uh, to to our CMOs. However, we have uh, those uh, uh, IPO suites. And uh, with that expertise, we, we are able, uh, as I mentioned, because that part of the market is still dynamic, we are able to still uh, uh, fill uh, and continue to grow our pipeline uh, of development, despite of the, the, the trends that has been um, described a bit earlier on, on the call, where here and there a few CMOs are struggling a bit to, to fill their uh, large uh, equipment capacities. Uh, when it uh, starts to, to, to dry a bit uh, from a biotech perspective. And regarding uh, Hypo Unit 9, you know, we have one of the best Hypo facility, but it's lying idle for the last two years. So what type of, what is your management's view on making that plant uh, commercially once again viable? So uh, regarding that, uh, that facility in India, of course, uh, it's also uh, part of the Babla site. Uh, and uh, as uh, Ashil uh, mentioned, uh, there is an expectation from customer to see a, uh, uh, audit clearance from the EDQM. So uh, uh, yes, the, the, the facility uh, has a, a, an attractive setup, uh, but we have to be patient to, to clear uh, uh, the death from uh, from an audit perspective, and uh, from that point in time, uh, we can uh, reinitiate and uh, and rediscuss a number of discussions that were on hold for a while uh, with with some of the customers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Ketan from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, wanted to know if you have any debt repay repayment plan. Uh, uh, do you plan to sell any non-core assets and repay the debt, or how how will be the debt level in next two to three years? Hello, Ketan. Uh, oh. Thank you for your question. So, so as far as the the, the debt is concerned, uh, yeah, I mean we have I mean we have the regular repayments uh, which we'll be doing every year. Uh, but, you know, if you see, most of the debt has been taken in the last two years, two, two and a half years, and that is for the capital expenditure that we were doing for setting up the, the new French facility, as well as uh, the ADC expansion in Switzerland. And what's ongoing right now is the digital transformation that we are undertaking across the Carbon Genesis Group. And, and the fourth one is obviously the, the CapEx that we are doing at the India side, uh, taking into account not just the, 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 the regulatory audits, but also keeping into view the next uh, 10, 15 years where we do not anticipate to face any such regulatory issues as we did in March of 2020. So what we expect is that uh, we would start realizing the returns from these investments over the next uh, two to three years, which would help us in generating good amount of cash flow and which can definitely be utilized to, to either pay off the debt or uh, keep it as an as an investment, um, whatever. But the, the, the net debt uh, in three years' time should reduce from where we are right now is is what we are targeting internally. Uh, having said that, you know, if you see our business, it is quite uh, capital intensive. So depending upon how the business progresses, in order to get new molecules, in order to, I mean, we'll have to see, you know, how the molecules commercialize, uh, the, the ones under late phase three development. We are trying to utilize the sites in Manchester, Shanghai, and eventually India, uh, for, for manufacturing the intermediate, if not the final API for these molecules, uh, especially for the larger volume ones. And, uh, you know, we would not want to have any unnecessary capex 
uh, but try to fully utilize the, the capacities and the capabilities that we have across the organization. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question, we do expect that the net debt should come down in the next three years uh, with the cash, with the free cash that would be generated. Uh, but obviously, you know, there are no plans to sell any non-core assets because uh, we, we don't see any non-core assets as we speak right now. Okay. And uh, uh, these fixed assets which you are purchasing uh, from last two, say two to three years, this must be in relation to all the expansions uh, you have just mentioned, right? That's correct. Okay. So, and then what will be your... Uh, uh, capex plan and uh, maintenance capex uh, going ahead. So I would say uh, on a run rate basis, about 25 million can be taken as the as the run rate of the capex to be done over the next three years. Uh, it's for 25 million per year, 25 to 30 million. So this would include the maintenance capex as well. Uh, sorry, 25 million. Uh, With francs. Francs, francs. Yeah, right. And Okay, so all of this will be maintenance. Okay, and if you can give any estimates for yeah. yeah, please go on. Sorry. Yes. No, so m most of it would be maintenance as well as, uh, you know, some of it would be like replacement capex. Uh, some of it could be, you know, like, for example, we entered into this co-investment agreement with the Japanese customer. So if, if depending upon the volumes that might be required for some of these new molecules, we might enter into this kind of an agreement which would require some kind of capex as well. But all, all of the capex that we would be doing, that would be backed by either a form contract or a form purchase order. So there would be no capex. Uh, that would be just in the anticipation of some business coming in. Okay. And uh, can you provide some estimates for uh, FY25? Revenue and uh, in terms of... So in terms of uh, revenue, so, so as we guided even last time, we do expect that over the next three to five years, we should expect the revenues to increase by, uh, you know, at least 12 to 15 percent. Uh, the operating margin should increase at a higher pace, at, at a higher pace as India keeps on ramping up the uh, revenues, especially out of the Babla side. Uh, so as you would have seen, uh, you know, prior to the EDQM, India was doing margins of 40% plus, and uh, once we are able to get over this hurdle of regulatory audit, we do expect that more business should come to India, and that should help us in improving the, the overall group EBITDA. So the EBITDA should uh, keep on increasing by about uh, 15 to 20% year over year. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. The next question comes from Rupin Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Arshil, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, last one and a half to two years back, we had uh, announced co partnership uh, with uh, an European and an US partner. So, what is the status on that? No, so, what we had announced was, uh, you know, what I just recently mentioned, which was a co investment agreement that we had entered into, or we have right. entered into with uh, with this Japanese customer for whom we would be manufacturing the, the ADC molecule. No, so that, that, is, that is there, that is there, Japanese is there, but we had announced with an European partner and an uh, American partner also. European, uh, so there are other releases are there. So there would be, uh, co so there are co-investment agreements with some of our other customers as well, including mm -hmm. uh, some of the biotech companies in uh, in the US and Europe. Uh, so for that also, you know, we are currently manufacturing the molecule and supplying it out of the Swiss entity. Okay, so investment in that uh, must be much less than uh, what we have done for the IDC project, right? Yes, that, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, okay. And what is that? Uh, what is the status of we have applied for a uh, patent for our vitamin D analog or something like that? What is the status on that? 
Yeah, so that has been applied. Uh, we are still waiting for the results of it. So that has yet not been approved. So we, we are waiting for that. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thank you very much, you can. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Pascal Willeman for the closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you so much for your attention today, and uh, we'll be back in a quarter to uh, describe our uh, uh, revenues and, 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 and results. I thank you, all, everybody, to participate uh, today. And thank you, Ashley, and thank you, Paolo, for your participation. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Dishman Carbogens MCS Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may all disconnect your lines now, and have a pleasant evening, everyone.